Speaking of Happy presents Frankly Speaking with co-hosts Eli Rigatuso, founder and queer transmasculine two-spirit of the Menominee Nation, and the lovely Avalisa Ellicott, model, public speaker, makeup fanatic, and outspoken transgender advocate. Together, we are Frankly Speaking. <gasps> yes, we are. We are, frankly speaking. Hello, my beautiful friend. Hello, Eli. How are you this wonderful Friday evening? <laughs> you know, I am feeling pretty excited and super happy. Super, super happy. <laughs> I'll be even more excited once I can get this earring on. Uh, yeah. I'm there sure. we go. Got okay. <laughs> That has been a struggle. <laughs> My the, lighting ball kooky. You know what though? The hair is <laughs> fabulous. Thank you. Mm, gorgeous, sister. Gorgeous, sister. Nice. A mm. nice brown. Yes. It's, it's been one hell of a day. And <laughs> I am so excited to be with you here for another Frankly Speaking. And, you know, to get the gig of our, our special guest. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, it's been a few weeks since we've we've had a show. You've had some things going on. I've had some Ooh. things going on. And it's That's uh, an understatement, Eli, on <laughs> I both <know>. ends. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we are we are busy peoples. Busy, <laughs> busy people. It's all life does what life does best. <laughs> yes, it does. It's all good busy. Mm -hmm. And to be able to come back after taking a few week hiatus and having Mila Jam join us is like, I just can't even put into words because I'm totally fanboying over here. <laughs> oh, hard. It's like the <laughs> ultimate gag to have Mila here. And like, yeah. I've just been doing my best like to not think about it the entire day because if I did, like it would have thrown me off my game. You know, I have also been, uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to do the same thing as well. You're just <laughs> yeah. like, okay, this is really happening. Not sure what time she's going to be joining us, but she is going to be joining us. I did send all the necessary links. Um, so hopefully she will uh, be here with us soon. But for those of you who are joining us who may not know the uh, amazingness that is Mila Jam. Mila Jam, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the uh, information on her one sheet that was sent to me by her, by her people, by her guy, her person. So Mila Jam is a New York City pop recording artivist and transgender star. They fill every room with talent, personality, and undeniable style. A YouTube sensation turned original pop artist, Mila is known around the world for her unforgettable stage performances and one-of-a-kind musical videos. Mila has toured Internationally, with the Broadway musical Rent, performed alongside James Brown, Mark Ronson, Laverne Cox, Travis Wall, Jody Watley, Lady uh, Keir of Delight, and Natasha Bedingfield. Appearances include the BBC's The Lily Allen Show, MTV and MTV News, the Glad Media Awards with special features on the Huffington Post, MTV.com, Out.com, Shondaland.com, and PerezHilton.com. She is the Odyssey Nightlife Awards Breakthrough Artist 2015, the Glam Nightlife Awards Best Video and Dance Artist 2013, and the talk show host of an original YouTube talk show series titled I'm From Drift Driftwood. And if that wasn't enough to get you excited about today's guest, they just released, and I, I I did a little deep dive. I was like kind of curious. I've been mm -hmm. following, I've, I found Mila's stuff since like, I think 2015, maybe early 2016 is when I started following her. And she just somehow popped up um, in a Google search, I think one day. And, you know, I went down the little road, down the little rabbit hole today. And just like, I found some old, Britney Houston stuff, and you've, yes! talked, you've talked about Britney Jesus. Houston. <laughs> I was obsessed with Britney Houston there for a hot second. 
I was like, oh, this is my everything. This is my entire life. I needed this. And I didn't realize how much I needed this. Oh, yeah. And like there are. So on the Britney Houston YouTube, which is still out there, there's Mm -hmm. a bunch of videos that are that are there that Mila has done. There's a couple of like tributes to Janet Jackson, which are amazing (laughs) because I'm a huge Mm -hmm. Janet Janet Jackson fan as well. Um, So it's just, I mean, so cool to be able to um, have Mila join us. And speaking of which, (laughs) oh no, (laughs) there might be someone here. Oh, ah. Can't hear. Uh, you can't hear us. Oh no. I can hear you. Oh, oh no. Hold on. Is your, yeah. Cause we're I'm not muting you, you here. We can yes. hear you. Yes. I can't hear you. <sighs> Maybe go away and come back. Let's see. <laughs> uh, let's or you see. can go down to Cam and Mike. Here, if I do. No. It's where the audio is coming from. Are you there, Mila? Can you hear us? Because I have mic settings. Yeah. I don't know where speaker settings in this are, though. I don't see any speakers. I've had this issue before where uh, people couldn't hear me, and when they pop out and come back in, most of the time that usually fixes it. Yeah, so let me send her a quick message. I don't know if she'll see that in the comments field. <laughs> now they're just teasing us. <laughs> Now we're being I was teased. ready to do my entire introduction. I, I still have it. I'm still. <laughs> well, go ahead. Still in the chamber. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. She, I think I figured it out. Oh, yay. Oh, you can I hear me. Hi. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Oh, okay. Let me, let me rewind. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my good sis. My best friend. Hi, lady. Hi, lady. How are you? I am doing wonderful. It is so wonderful to be able to have you here, especially with everything that you're doing, but like erase all of that to be able to be in the virtual room with you. It's like an entire (laughs) moment. And I've I've needed this for a sec. Uh, Good. I'm so glad that I could be here for a bit. You, you just, you know, you make me smile every time I see you and I'm so (gasps) just, I'm bubbling with joy and I feel the energy. So I'm just, I'm very, I'm very happy to see you thriving. Aww. I'm happy to see you thriving as well. Talk a little bit about how long the two of you have known one another and been connected. Oh my God, I don't know. Oh, this is a good question. Because yeah. we've never I, I think it, hung out in person. Right, right. Yeah, we've never You've just met been, in person. But we just was, are like... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you go, you go. <laughs> Okay, so uh, like I said before, I was deep, deep into Brittany Houston um, and just the biggest fan ever. And then I saw Mila come out with all of this music and wonderful stuff. And then I was randomly on Facebook and uh, saw Mila on Facebook and I was like, fuck it, and went and sent the friend request <laughs> and she accepted. And I was like, oh, oh my God, me, oh my God. And then like, <laughs> We have started to communicate now. Like I have, we ha- we've had really good conversations, and so very good. It was just kind of like, yeah, uh, thing that just kind of happened. <laughs> yeah, it's the sisterhood, you know, and it's the connection, the online connection. I think that this is a way for us to obviously, you know, befriend people we we may or may not ever meet, and that's kind of how it happened. You know, we just connected online and I think, you know, one of these days we'll meet in person. It's, I, I always just believe things happen when they're supposed to, you know, I don't mm-hmm. ever try to like dictate, you know, you put the effort in, but like, you know, not too much, you just let it ride, let it slide. So just let I mean, it happen when it happens. You know when it happens and that's just, you know, that's kind of how it is. But I'm glad that we've had conversations because I think what we need is to have each other there in some capacity, 
you know, there are a lot of girls that are out there in the world that may not agree on a lot of things. We all have our own vision and our own view and our own journey. There are a ton of parallels that we will experience though, you know, with, mm -hmm. whether it's life and family and dating and just existing. So that's important to me. And if there's ever a sister that I connect with, that I can, you know, have a conversation with, I'm here for it. You know, and that's yeah, what I think, I think it's, Oh, and so I was just going to say real quick, I'm just going to interject. And then I think the two of you can, can talk and I will just be happy as heck listening. Um, cause I just love you both so much. Um, but I, I was kind of doing a deep dive and reading, uh, about you online and some of the things that you were doing and like to know that you accepted Avalisa's friend request and then have had actual conversations and interacted with her speaks volumes about just who I've been reading about because you are that person who will stop and take time. And, you know, I love, <laughs> I loved your, uh, the little promo you did for us that you sent <laughs> and the, just even the topic, like even just saying, like, we need to talk about how we as a community mm -hmm. can come together and start to uplift and, and acknowledge and celebrate one another. Cause you know, as just as a transgender, non-binary, gender, non-conforming community, there's a lot of, you know, up, 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 that going on. Yeah, yeah. Then you throw in the rest of the initialism, the LGBs and all the rest, and it just can be such a train wreck sometimes. Yeah, the alphabet soup. Yeah, yeah. it is like that. You know, I think that there's no shortage of disconnection in any group, any, you know, cultural experience, we all have that. Like being a black woman, this happens in the black community, black and brown community. You know, we have our agreements and our disagreements. We butt heads, we don't always see eye to eye, but our experiences are really what I think are, that, I think those are the things that matter. And how do we find ways to connect with each other even when we don't agree? And I, I heard something that was very specific and special about inclusivity. Inclusivity is allowing people to bring their full self to the table, their authentic self to the table, not necessarily always a kumbaya. You know, it's not always a picnic, but inclusivity looks like you being able to be at an, an event or a space with people that you don't necessarily agree with. You can have a conversation with them. You can say like, that's not my viewpoint. That's not how I feel about it, but that's you. Cool, we can agree to disagree but at least I was able to bring my full authentic self to the table. And that's what I wanna be able to do when I go in spaces. I wanna be fully Mila, I wanna be fully myself. You know, we will edit as we go because this happens, you know, uh, what's the term in the black community when you're like editing yourself? What is that term? Oh my God, it's slipping my mind. It's the uh, code switching. Yes, code, code switching. switching is real. <laughs> and we've all done it to some degree and it's sometimes it's about safety and security and you have to do that to protect yourself. But when we're able to not have to code switch and we can just like, oh, you know, it's like when you get home and you unbuckle your jeans and you relax and you're just like, <laughs> your belly gets to hang out. So I feel like I want our community to see sides that we don't necessarily see. Because there are gay men in the community who don't know anything about black trans women. They don't so? they don't get us. Uh, and there are gay men in the community that are supportive, that do get it. That even if they don't get it, they want to see seek change and they want to seek uh, refuge for us and help for us. So these overlays of experiences, they are plenty, but we, we can at least have conversations, you know, and it's even just to, yeah. So that's where I kind of come from about this because it, it is a topic I feel yeah. passionate about. Yeah, yeah, Eli and I were just talking about it. It's actually a conversation that we have quite often um, the the disconnect that we have within our own trans community mm -hmm. because there all there are so many identities underneath the umbrella and I think uh, with like the black community and and women as a whole we have gotten a chance to understand that we are individuals we understand that we all live different lives and we all go mm -hmm. down different paths and so it's easier to see uh, a black woman or hear something about a black woman and be like oh that's just her. But when it comes to trans people, because so many people don't understand our experience, it's like, oh, that's trans people. Not that that's her, that's trans people. And so I think this 
idea of it trying to uh, box us, put us in a box to make it easier to understand uh, has really done a lot of harm for the community. And I think that it's about education and having these conversations because there is so much hatred within the community because I know specifically for me as a binary trans woman, like we've been on this road for a hot minute. Mm -hmm. And so to finally be at the place where we're starting to see visibility and we're starting to see acceptance, it's like, awesome, this is so good for us. And then you have people who don't follow the binary that are like, this is trans, this is trans, this is trans. And it, it, it erases our identity. It hurts us who we are because we do follow the binary. And then it's like, okay, hold up. <laughs> cool, get it, you do you, but this me. And so I think we need to be able to express ourselves as individuals and help people understand that we aren't a monolith as we move forward. Because I think that's the only way that we're gonna be able to break up the the whatever it is that we're having within the community because it's, I see it and, you know, I'm not laughing the way that I used to. Yeah, you know, I think there is a little bit of a shift that's happened even in the last five, 10 to five years of what it means to be an, a binary trans woman. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I identify the same way. Um, I identify on the, the binary um, as a woman and I'm constantly finding myself these days learning about the other experiences within our community and not taking the idea that because I am who I am and I feel the way that I feel, using that as a precedent to say that I am more valid or that I am more important. And I'm saying this because I feel like earlier on in, in the movement, you know, even in the last decade, I would say from the 2000s to now, like in the last 20 years, there was a positioning, I think, that as trans women that we've had in this world, that aside from it being secretive and very underground and not really talked about, the assimilation that we've had to endure just to survive. And the mm -hmm. whole point of being able to just like adapt to womanhood and be like, I'm a woman and nobody needs to know anything else. You know, I remember times dating guys and like, it's like, you know, nobody would know that you're, th that you're trans so I feel comfortable dating you, but if we, you know, we you can't talk about it. I, my family's not going to talk about it. I'm not going to tell friends. And at some point, that was okay. It was like mm -hmm. that's what you did because you felt a validated, and you felt like you had a place in the world, even though you knew that it was not right and that it was wrong. And then coming out of that phase of the experience, in my opinion, seeing the 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 expression and the vocabulary expand the way, because guess I mean, guess what? We've all been here. Everyone has been non-binary, gender non-conforming, trans, everything in between. There's like really nothing that can come up that hasn't existed before. We just may mm -hmm. not have that classification or conversation or vocabulary about it. So it makes me feel like I have to continuously be in a state of learning, just like I feel like any of our siblings have to be in a state of learning. And I always feel like I like to stand corrected if someone teaches me something new or gives me information that like, I couldn't tell you, you know, about gender non-conforming, non-binary people six years ago, seven years ago, you know? I mean, like, I have very close family and friends, team members, people who, you know, work with me. They're my family, my chosen family. And this is someone, and I'm someone coming from the generation of, you're either gay or straight. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mine is just on like, your way there. It's gay yeah, or straight. Was, that was Man very binary. <laughs> yeah, that oh, was yeah? very binary. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then you also have to think about, we, we take into consideration the, the bi erasure, like mm. the erasure of folks who are bi, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it kind of is a similar thing when it comes to the binary. It's like, there are some people that are so committed to it, mm -hmm. right? Because I identify as a queer transmasculine two-spirit of the Menominee Nation. Hey, absolutely. Right? And so <laughs> yeah. I believe intrinsically I am both masculine and feminine mm -hmm. and that I'm equally so. Yeah. My expression is more masculine. And so the pronouns that I, that I completely are affirmed by is he, his. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with a they, them if you're not sure. Right. But like it just bristles like the, the hair on the back of my neck stands on end when I'm she heard. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it's, but when I hear other folks, like for example, Avalisa and I were just talking about Demi Lovato. 
Uh huh. Yes. Love them. I think mm-hmm. that it's beautiful that they're doing what they're doing, but there are some ways that they talk that is so like a little, uh, Hey, this is just me. I'm just mm. saying I'm speaking on behalf of myself, right. not like speaking in a manner that it sounds like it's about the whole community. And I see that a lot with especially people who have uh, the the social following and the influence and that sort of thing. I don't see that with you. I see with you like like just like it's raining them. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I want to touch on something with that because I think that's a very good point. I think we are more inclined to talk about, uh, you, there's a sense of being responsible for yourself, you know, responsible for your experience. My journey is my journey and I know what I feel and I, and I experience when I walk out of my front door. Mm-hmm. I don't always know what that feels like for other members of my community. I have an idea, we have conversations, there are overlaps. So, you know, when something is just being talked about in, in, a, in, a, in a novice way, in a way that everyone is starting to just catch wind of or get like starting to learn about. I think there's this pressure on, on singular people that are carrying the torch. I think the pressure is that they have to represent all of us, that we have to be these beacons of light that represent everyone in the community. And this happens in the black community. When we see someone successful in black and doing it and making you know a name for themselves, we, we automatically feel like they have to represent the whole community and the whole race. And it's not necessarily true. You know, I right. think that there is awareness. I think that um, I just try to stay aware of what, you know, my closest siblings and family members would think or say about yeah. what I m- might be doing. You know, someone made a comment it's just off the record. And and like, we know that the world is very, there's a duality in like love and hate, you know, the haters and the lovers and people who follow you and like you and people who can't stand you. And so somewhere along the lines of, of you know, people getting their lives in, in the hate sector or like in the, um, the judgmental, like, you know, trolling sector, someone had mentioned that like, you know, not all non-binary people go by they, them, and that to some degree, I might not know what I'm talking about. A hundred percent understand that, you know, I understand that there is conversation and vocabulary that is, might be used, but in the context of writing a song and introducing a conversation, that's a narrative to people who don't even consider it something worth talking about, got to start somewhere. And I think the simplicity of taking it's raining men and making it about it's raining them is, I think it's, wonderful i think it's 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 unique i think it's cool but we all have a love for things that are classics we all love our <laughs> original movie we all love the the book more than we like the remake i, I get it you know but but it comes with the territory yeah and there will be a new generation of people and this is what i really hope i'm not i'm not trying to skip ahead but this is what i really hope about this particular song that i've done is that there is a generation behind me that does feel like because I heard this through Mila Jam or somebody like to be called me Mila Jam. <laughs> Not Mila. <laughs> that they feel seen and they feel heard yeah. and they feel included in the conversation. You know, I've lately I've been thinking about like, does this mean now that I have to write like every song that I write now has to be only about like, and I, I, I really champion gender neutral, you know, writing like when we can. Sure. But there's liberation for me also as a woman to yeah. have a conversation about talking about men because that, those are the people that I'm romantic with um, or masculine identifying people. So, you know, there's that dichotomy. And then it's like, do I need to write every song that's going to be about them and they, them uh, or non-binary? Uh, should I stray away from any doing that too much? Because then people are going to pigeon are going to pigeonhole me. So honestly, you don't ever know. You can't, like, yeah. I can't really predict that. But um, what I can do is I can stay committed and connected to the things that I that I find um, may give me joy or make, make me feel passionate about it. And when this came to me, this was like, oh, I mean, like, yeah, like, absolutely. I'm like totally down for this and here for it. So shout out to anyone who has been really, really supportive and has found some sense of recognition or inspiration in it. Oh, I was like blown away. 
I think it's I think it's freaking amazing. <laughs> and like I I played it on repeat and just was yeah. like yeah. It, just, it just made my heart happy. But see, there's also those folks, like you say, there are those people that no matter what you do, they're gonna look for the one thing to be critical about. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So what and you can't please everybody. You have right. to be, you know, right. I I must admit, like even when you have tough skin and you can take you, you can take a lot of uh, of negative you know energy thrown at you. One thing that I, I think is beautiful about our community is there's such a level of resilience mm -hmm. that we have had to you know you know we've had to cultivate because we come from being bullied, you know extra bullied. Like I believe that everybody is bullied at some point in their life, but I think we're just extra bullied um, for yeah. being trans, for being people being gay, for being queer. And I just don't understand, like, when we know what that feels like, like, how, why, like, I, I guess, you know, it's the, the, the phrase hurt people, hurt people. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never understood how going through that and living at the intersection of an intersection of an intersection, like, mm -hmm. to go through that experience and then be like, but I hate that bitch. Yeah. And everybody like her. And it's like. To some degree, I do think that, you I do think that a little bit is uh, supremacy, and I think that is yeah. the, the patriarchy and the toxic masculinity that we are swimming in. Yeah. Because realistically, we are all having to keep up with the Joneses, and the Joneses in this case is white supremacy, and that's what validates our existence. So, you know, if I'm able to get, you know, the opportunity comes in from putting someone else down, you know, that that's where we're at. It's like, how does, what is your compass? You know, where mm -hmm. are you leading from? Are you leading from your your gut? Are you leading from your heart? Are you leading from your mind? Are you leading from your wallet? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we lead from all of them separately. And some yeah. of them, sometimes they combine <laughs> together, you know, and yeah. it's the A team. I like, I. it's interesting, you know? Yeah, I totally get it. But tell me, where did this inspiration come from for this latest song? So this was actually a project that was brought to me by this, oh. the company Deezer. Deezer is a streaming service in the UK. They're very much similar to Spotify. They partnered with um, they partnered with a charity, an organization, Gendered Intelligence, in the UK, and they worked with them and. They started the process. They started to write the song. They were like, we really want to do something with this. And you know, for most people who don't understand, understand the world of music, um, even as a writer, as a songwriter, as a, an, a singer, producer, all of those things, because you do things with other people, it doesn't necessarily negate your abilities to write. Because a lot of people think that Britney Spears wrote X, Y, or Z song. <laughs> that was six people that wrote the song, right? Right. So, and there are artists who obviously they will write, you know, and maybe they'll have one other person write with them or two other people. But this was a collaborative. This was uh, something that was brought to my attention. And Deezer came to me and they said, we have been in tune with you as a musician and as an artist. We feel like you have the not only the platform, but the ability to make this conversation global. Mm. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I like the idea, but I was like, what does this entail? And so they sent me, you know, they sent me the music, they sent me some lyrics. And as, as I basically were like, we'd love for you to record this. And we'd love for you to be the artist to take this on. And I said, okay. And listening to some of the lyrics and writing, I, I helped write, you know, portions of the song that were really about being inclusive. You know, one of the moments that I really love about the song is we all say hallelujah, amen. But like no one ever thought like, instead of saying amen, why don't we say a them? Because <laughs> it's raining, it's raining them. So I'm really proud of that moment because I think that's such a noteworthy statement to say a them instead of amen. Yeah. And uh, th just teaming up together with them allows me to have a reach because they're in the UK and I'm here in the States. And if you notice, you know, being in the States, uh, in America, we have a very small, like boxed in viewpoint of how and what people should look like, what they should do, how they should dress, how they should act, what they should create, what they should cover. You know, how, how are you masculine? How are you feminine? We're yeah. constantly judged. 
So now like a lot of the press that I'm getting is overseas in, in Europe and in the UK and Germany and Brazil. And it's, it's reaching people that I couldn't reach alone. And it's really, that's what that's about. So I'm really, you know, happy that Deezer came to me and they saw, you know, saw me as an artist and said like you and we need to, you know, we need to make this project happen. Yeah. So I what is they did as well? <laughs> <laughs> well, when Avalisa sent it to me, I was just like, oh my God, this just makes so much sense. Yeah. Like, it's so perfect. I saw yeah. you post it and I was like, oh, she better and clicked it. And I was like, ah, no. But I'll tell you the like, hardest part of the whole project. I haven't really spoken about this in an interview yet, but I was given one month to do everything. Wow. And And if you know anything about putting anything together, that is not enough time, <laughs> not a lot of time at all. Right. I was, uh, my manager called me, he's like, hey boo, this is what's on the table. And I was like, oh, okay, challenge. He's like, but <laughs> like deliverables have to be by this date, which was literally a month from the call of them saying like, we need you to reimagine the song, mm -hmm. find a producer who can do that. You have to rewrite some of these lyrics. You have to record the song. It has to be mixed and mastered. And then you have to shoot a music video for it. We have to have the music video ready because because when you release a project like this, in general, when you release music, you know you do your press release, and you you have everything sitting, you know, waiting in the wing, and that gets shown to all of your contacts, your connections, you know, uh, journalists, PR does their thing. So you got to have that stuff ready way before it comes out. Yeah. And sometimes some of these things have to be done a month, two months in advance for lead time, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's amazing how, even in the business, how that happens. You know, sometimes I think about film uh, films, like a big Marvel movie, you know, it's always interesting how when they start promoting the film, they start way ahead. You know, the film doesn't come out to 2024, <laughs> they start promoting it now and they're still filming it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You have to know what it's, the response is gonna be. You know, so did you film it that, so you filmed it in New York? We filmed it in New York. Yes, we filmed it here in New York. Um, shout out to the two awesome locations we filmed at. We filmed at Club Q, which just opened not even too much, like really literally opened in June. Um, and if I'm, I'm not mistaken, um, I'm the first person to film a music video at New York City's newest, largest club. Frankie Sharp I know. is a friend of mine and Frankie Sharp had just been so generous and so wonderful about being inclusive and having the community use his space. And I went to, to Frankie and I said, Frankie, I have to shoot this video and I need to be in the queue. <laughs> and I need to do this <laughs> like next week. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so we, we arranged it, we figured it out, we worked it out. And then um, the other location I shot at is a place in Hudson Yards with, with this beautiful rooftop um, viewpoint and, and it just, I, I had a couple of concepts. There are so many different things you can do when it comes to creating a music video. And sometimes you wonder, did I go the right direction? Did I make the right choice? And I, I always like, I don't like the pressure of not being able to like fully flesh out like an idea. Also, and then there's also the question of budget because you're like, it. I, I found out, you know, that like, Cardi B spends at least a million dollars on a video, at least. Like that's the starting point. You know, people don't realize how much money goes into make these music videos that are so wonderful and iconic that everyone consumes for like a week and then they move on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but the team here, me and my team here in New York, we had auditions for dancers. We wanted non-binary and gender non-conforming <clears throat> folk. We wanted folks that identified however they identified, body positive, some of the best dancers are some of the dancers that are not small and not size two um, that I know. And I think the the thing with that is like, it's about your passion and it's about your drive and it's about your work ethic, you know? And those things don't get in the way of your body or your size. Like you can be any of that, so. Well, see, and I think that that also, you create a shift then because I'll tell you what, I'm a big, I'm a big guy. I'm not a little guy. So when I see bigger people yeah. showing up in things, like mm -hmm. I am also affirmed. Visibility, right? ma visibility saves lives. I, there's a, like there's big a, time. It really does. Yeah. <laughs> big time. I, I think that, you know, we have been in a space where 
we have gotten so much uh, visibility as binary trans people and to be mm -hmm. able to use that platform. That's something we talk about all the time. If you want to get to know me, don't ask Eli, ask me. Yeah. So. I mean, Eli will tell you some stories, but. <laughs> Eli will tell you some stories. Um, and if Eli is, if I'm not able to be there, if I'm not in the space where I'm doing it, if Eli is able to raise what I was going to say, raise my message, raise visibility up for me, mm -hmm. like that's amazing. We have to use, look, I talk about privilege all the time and people are not comfortable with it because, you know, we we know about white privilege and we know mm -hmm. about you know these certain privileges but i have privilege i'm pretty as fuck mm -hmm. and i'm well spoken oh. and i'm light skinned <laughs> and i'm able bodied i know the privileges i have and i know that other people don't have the same privileges and we have to be able to use the bit of privilege that we do have to uplift others and that's the way that we all kind of get out of this dog eat dog situation where we're all fighting for attention because we're all lifting each other up and right. so to you know be the person who doesn't use they them pronouns but is putting that out there in such an amazing way that is so catchy that my mom was singing it to me this afternoon Aww. like <laughs> like that's amazing you know and what's like, real to me is that there's only so much that we as marginalized people in the community can do i completely yeah. agree with you with privilege but we also have to keep in the forefront there are people in this world that will have and always have way more privilege than we have that will never do anything for us yeah. or never yep. never be a part of the conversation yeah. And it's the displacement of that that really makes it unfortunate because the pressure can be really heavy for you, for myself, for anyone that might have these outstanding privileges to help everyone, to help pull people up. But, you know, there's like this, if it's a chart, you know, there's people who are way up there in terms of privilege, visibility, whiteness, all of those things. And they don't even have to wake up in the morning and think about anything yeah. other than oh the sky is blue and this is you know and my and my ranch is, is yeah <laughs> yeah they certainly don't wake up and go i wonder how i'm gonna make a difference today and some do and some i wonder do. if i'm going to eat some today do. Some do. There are a lot who don't, you know and 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 like it's 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 really icky but that's the way of the world that's I the know. world that we've all been born into yeah. And that's one thing that really makes me feel uh, protective about, you know, like not having children in this world. Like I'm someone that doesn't feel like I need to be a parent. I, I can't say that I don't need to be a parent, you know, because I, that could change in my life. I don't necessarily want to. I've always grown up feeling like I, my my connection, my ministry <laughs> in the world is to help be a healer of sorts yeah through art and through you know and through conversation and through my existence and you know being a parent is a job in itself but uh i feel like that is a very hard tough job because it's a lot to you know have to ch to share and to pass on to people to Absolutely. make them to be to create good human beings is not very you know it's hard but it's not easy for a lot of people they just don't it's it. a full time job <laughs> chasing after a child is not my ministry that's not what I was put on this earth for and I am okay with that my husband is okay with that so that's I think heavy. I'm good <laughs> how is so, your husband as side note uh, yeah. He's doing really good. Um, we have a lot of things happening. And as Eli knows, I like to be extremely secretive about the things that are going on in my life, just in case. Uh, but we have a lot of really big things happening that are stressing us both out, but they're always good things. And so we're both just, you know, trying to not lose our minds in like yeah. the next three months. And if we can make it through that, then we'll be good. Uh, I'm very happy to hear that. I mean, last night she made turkey chili and the biggest concern was not <laughs> touching her eyeballs after she after cut the jalapeno peppers. Don't do that. <laughs> no, don't do that. So Mila, tell me something. You've been, you have been doing what you've been doing for like at least a couple, almost two decades now, right? Mm -hmm. And how would you say the, the community itself 
and I'm talking specifically about our transgender, non-binary, gender non-conforming community, how has it shifted over your time doing the work that you're doing? Because you've really, I mean, you have been, you've been doing the thing yeah, for a while. We all, we all change as we go. It's the evolution of, of the experience. And I'm just noticing the awareness has shifted so dramatically. There's just so much more awareness of, of you know, existence, you know, being conversation, kids coming out, you know, very young. And I have friends who have children that are identifying as non-binary and don't use he or she pronouns and are using they, them pronouns or he, they, or she, they. That was an unknown world to me. You know, I always dreamed about being able to just use the pronouns she and her. <laughs> and I, I struggled, you know, with that growing up. It's like, you know, but I know that I'm a woman inside and I know this is who I'm supposed to be. And, you know, kind of journeying in through, you know, the last past number of years in, in, in this industry, I mean, I think that you have to be able to be malleable and I think you have to be able to be ready for anything and, and ready for whatever comes next. And I think that's how you stay on top of things. Um, and it's a chameleon kind of effect because when we get set in our ways, you know, unless you're in a position in your life where you can be and you can just, you know, avoid everyone else, you're going to get left behind. And I think that's something that we as people who are, you know, Black, who are Brown, who are AAPI, who are trans, who are non-binary, we all have been pushing humanity forward with people holding us back. And we are constantly pushing us forward and then taking five or 10 steps back. So I've been able to see all of these steps forward while simultaneously watching people pulling us back and being like, you have to release. Like we have to just move, we gotta go. Like my motto lately has been like, okay, I tell this to my mom. My, we'll be at the, the store and I'm like, mom, we gotta move. We gotta move. We've been here for, for two and a half hours <laughs> looking at, looking at cereals or whatever. We gotta move, we gotta move. Like life is catching up to us and it's so short. So like while we're here, what are we doing with the time we, we have here and how are we moving things and moving the needle forward and contributing to the larger conversation? So that's pretty much it. But I've seen some, uh, one of the, one of the um, cultural shifts that I can really speak on seeing is the shift of drag race. Like it is something that everyone knows now, but there was a time that I remember where having drag queens on TV was just not it. And it if not they were on TV, they were hookers, hookers. <laughs> and they were getting beat up. That were gonna, that were pushing to try to get that. And even in back in days when I was doing performing and parody stuff, you know, I always identified as a woman. People were like, are you a drag queen? Are you not? I didn't wear enough makeup for people back then either. Cause they were like, well, drag queens wear makeup. And I'd be like, well, I wear gloss. <laughs> they're like girl are you gonna do more than just gloss and no, some this mascara is and i'm like this, but I this is it <laughs> <laughs> but i remember just you know like having opportunities to be on tv were like so golden and so huge and you know it it's just amazing to see that it's just such a household thing now to see I want to say millions of drag queens, you know, funneling through <laughs> this huge empire, you know, of drag race. So yeah, well that, that and then true. and then like pose to have things and like pose, pose or, or oh. and pose, you know, and the narrative shift with that, and having trans women at the forefront of the conversation, yeah. having us be yes. a part of primetime TV, um, being Emmy nominated. Shout out to my sister MJ Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. There's just so many things, you know. But but as we do this. And this is, you know, kind of where I want to sort of close things because I do have some crazy things to, um, I do have some things to get into. But uh, I want to <laughs> say that the conversation is one thing. Visibility is one thing, but we have to activate change. And that change comes without, comes with more than just us asking for it. It mm. comes from our friends and our family and allyship and accompliceship. Um, I don't know if that's the word I made that up, but accomplices. But right. anyway, it looks like people that have that privilege that you talked about, Avalisa, that they can, you know, help open doors yeah. and include. And inclusion doesn't mean taking away. Yeah. 
Absolutely. One, just one quick question and then we'll let you go. <laughs> I mean, you can mm -hmm. jump off anytime you want to, but I know, that you're, <laughs> I know that you're super busy, but I just thank you so much. But for those young folks that are watching, because we do have a lot of younger viewers, mm -hmm. um, trans viewers, mm -hmm. uh, what would you they say? They should be watching the show. <laughs> what should you say? What would you say to help? Like what keeps you inspired and has you wake up every morning joyful and excited about what's going to happen in your day? I have dreams and I have goals. I have accomplishments to, to take on. I have always been so passionate and so driven and self-motivated to, you know, fulfill my purpose in this world. And I think fulfilling your purpose is not an end all be all. I don't think it's one thing. I don't think you just get there and you do it. So I think every day is a day to strive to get closer to something or some things that are gonna impact people in a positive way. And so I have many times where I feel like I could give up. I have many times where I feel defeated or where I feel like I don't even know if I should still be doing this or, or if I should stop. But, you know, after those, shortly after those feelings, something reminds me that I have a choice to step up to the plate. And the only person that's gonna be affected if I quit and if I stop is me. Mm. And if I get in my own way, I can't be mad at anybody else. Mm, beautiful. Thank you so much. So grateful to have you join us. And if you ever need any inspiration, feel free to reach out to me because I will shower it on you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I will gladly accept. Thank you. And, and Evelisa, I'm so, I'm so in awe of you. You're so wonderful and so kind and so beautiful. Thank you, sister, for being you and for shedding oh. light and that you can. Both of you, thank you for doing work that includes our community. And I hope to see you in person soon. I uh, hope so. We're going to make it happen. I, I think Avalisa and I just need to plan a trip to New York. If comes, you ever come to New York, please let me know. And I'll definitely try to make a point to see you. <laughs> Absolutely. I know you're busy. I will see you both <laughs> later. Thank you, All everyone, right. for watching. Thank you for coming. Much love. Thank Much you. Love. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Uh, <laughs> my life. It's been made <laughs> such a lovely human, like seriously. Really? And I, as I was reading about just some of the things that she's done, I'm, I'm just in awe because she's so down to earth. Mm -hmm. And when she accepted my friend request, like for me, it was like asking Beyonce for a friend request. Like eh, you throw that out there. It's never coming back. <laughs> That's coming out of that. And so to like, <laughs> be friends on Facebook. And I was like, oh my God, wow. She shows up on my friends <laughs> list, I'm on her, I see her post. And then to like actually start having conversations and get to know her as a person, I think it's so important that, you know, not necessarily uh, accessible uh, people that are highly visible in the community, but you know, people who will have that conversation, people who will sit down and talk to you and people who are still grounded in reality, because I think so much of gaining visibility and being the person that everybody goes to and being the person that, you know, whose face is recognized for things, uh, it, it kind of pulls you away from the same realities that you faced beforehand. and to be able to still be completely grounded um, yeah. and so motivated to do such amazing things. Ugh, I, ugh, this was it, this, yeah. this was the whole moment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just, I think about like, um, you know, Ashley Marie Preston, for example, who is out of LA and has just done a lot of really remarkable things as well, just advocacy work wise, because she's, mm -hmm. not, a, she's not a performer. Um, but the, the day that she accepted my Facebook friend request, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, so uh -huh. I, totally, I totally get it. I mean, I did send Mila a friend request. She has yet to accept, but it's all good. She <laughs> is busy, busy, busy. Uh, before, before it's raining and even dropped, I was like, Jesus, that schedule. Yeah. I wanted it once upon a time and now I get to do this and I enjoy this. I enjoy yeah. this a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. Maybe we should play It's Raining Them. Oh, 100%. For the people. 
So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to pull that up and we'll play that. And then we'll have a little chat after uh, the song is done. Where did it go? I have to find it here in my in my files. Please get into this because in it is an folders. entire box. <laughs> Uh, it's like so it was amazing. it was just on repeat for a hot minute and like I started sending it to people and I sent it to my mom and I was like look girl you need to get into this and she was like okay and <laughs> she heard it and it, it was stuck it was in there well and I've the just vocals been... <laughs> are amazing the arrangement is amazing and you know build so much on the original song while also still doing it justice I didn't get to talk musical shit with Mila, but you know, there's so much musically in yep. the reimagining of this anthem that has bopped at prides and gay clubs for yep. decades. Absolutely. All right. So here goes, we are going to uh, play It's Raining Them, uh, Mila Jam's remake of It's Raining Men, which is more inclusive and just truly amazing. So we'll play that. We'll be right back. Oh, as we we're not it's right back. Raining. We're still here. There it is. Hallelujah, it's raining them. Ain't them, it's raining them. Hallelujah, it's raining them. Humidity's rising. Yeah, barometer's getting low. According to all sources, the streets, the place to go. Tonight for the first time Just about time 
just amazing <laughs> absolutely gorgeous video absolutely absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. arrangement yeah uh, mm. Ooh, there's some there's the list of dancers we'll leave that up there for a little bit the q nightclub in new york city she talked about that so very awesome so very awesome awesome to have her on the show we have her on our background <laughs> Totally, yeah. totally fanboying over here. We're I see all... you. I see you back there. <laughs> I love it. I just, you know, um, I think that it's just so nice to to hear what she has. She thinks a lot like we do. You know, we talk about mm -hmm. this a lot when we do the trainings that we do together um, in regard to like, you know, advocate for us when we're not in the room. And if there's an opportunity that arises where we need to be in the room, invite us to the table mm -hmm. and then help clear the path. Like, you know, clear the path when people get in the way of really making systemic change because they're so stuck in their old beliefs of who we should all be as people. Right. Right. I think one of the things that you talked about that we, uh, we touched and we almost didn't touch it it got more personal is uh uh what you were saying about uh Demi Lovato and how they uh say things that are very centric to them mm -hmm. however they say them in a voice that is very wide this includes everybody it doesn't have that caveat of this is me, this is my experience, this is what I go through, this is what is applicable to me. Um, and I think that both you and I are doing a really good job <laughs> making sure that uh, we we have that caveat in the things that we say. And you know, for the longest time I used to say, I am not the Lorax, I do not speak for all of the trans. Right. Um, and I think Mila is also one of those people who, you know, speaks to her experience and speaks to the things that she goes through, but doesn't necessarily pull out a bullhorn and say, this is, a, this is trans people and this is what we experience. Right. And, and then, you know, I absolutely appreciate that. Yeah. And I think that sometimes what happens is, is that, you know, there are folks who get concerned about, you know, like, for example, if I get angry or upset about something and I'm just sharing it, maybe I'm just venting, in the moment, I might share something on Facebook about it, and then someone will respond with their, well, maybe if you weren't so angry, people would listen to you. And I'm like, um, first of all, I'm venting on my Facebook page. You have no idea. You have no idea what happened in real life and how I handled that situation. You mm -hmm. know, I, I, we talk about this in our trainings. I say all the time, look, if I am going to to facilitate a training about being more um, open and affirming of people, Ooh, sorry. of people like me, then I need to be open and affirming of you when you show up. Doesn't mean I always, I'm going to agree with what you have to share, but I mm -hmm. am going to, I'm not going to personally attack you because that's not my intent. And if you yeah. feel as though you're being personally attacked, I'm willing to listen to how, if that's the case. And if, if, if you plead your case in a way that I'm like, you know what, I can see how you would feel that way. And then mm -hmm. I just, apologize. I'm sorry that, and another thing that we kind of breezed through real quick is, you know, being wrong and learning, always learning. I think so many people, uh, with the experiences that we have in life and, you know, different things like that. We, we feel as though we are the expert on the subject. And yeah. anytime somebody tells us that we're wrong or anytime that somebody gives us new information that doesn't align with what we already know, there's an opportunity to take that extremely personal as someone saying, oh, you don't know this, you're not the expert, when in, out, when in all actuality, need to always be learning. I don't know everything about everything. I'm trans, I'm a trans black woman, and I still don't know everything about being a trans black woman because I have only lived my experience. So if somebody comes to me and tells me something that I haven't heard before, 
cool, I am wrong. I did not understand. Help me learn, help me grow. Instead of being so offended that, you know, someone's calling you out. Exactly. Oh, well. Speaking. <laughs> Frankly speaking. <laughs> oh, the giggle. <laughs> Frankly speaking. <laughs> I'm going to have to turn that into a sound effect. <laughs> I like the giggle and I like the little peace sign at the end. <laughs> Frankly speaking. <laughs> but that's going to become the new uh, <laughs> audio uh, <laughs> response will be frankly speaking with the giggle. So whenever somebody mm -hmm. says something on the show that we really like, it'll be Mila saying, yeah. frankly speaking. Frankly. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yes, not to, not to dis diminish what you just said, but I, and I agree wholeheartedly because you know, they're just, there is still a lot for folks to learn when it comes mm -hmm. to just how to be. And I'm not asking for perfection. I am asking for progress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just progress. And, you know, I have seen people ask me this That's why I asked her, um, you know, over her two decades worth of, you know, being an advocate, you know, like what was New York City like two decades ago for her compared to today, you know, and she is living this real out and vibrant and uh, compelling life. And, and for her to be so committed to pushing forward and continuing to do what she has done. I'm sure that in some ways things have gotten a lot easier for her. And I'm sure that in some ways they might've gotten harder because yeah. of who she is. Um, so, you know, I mean, these are the kinds of conversations that need to be had and, and hopefully people will understand and be more aware and, um, and not be, kind of like walking around with blinders on <laughs> <laughs> acting like this shit doesn't happen because it happens. And I think, you know. you know, what we don't talk about is that uh, with more <laughs> visibility, <laughs> with more visibility, you also, uh, you also get less safe. The higher yeah. your visibility, yeah. the lower your safety. And I yeah. think, uh, you know, with everybody expecting everyone to be an educator and expecting everyone to put themselves out there. I know that I had a conversation with somebody uh, and they were talking about uh, everybody like openly expressing that they are trans or that they are in support of, you know, trans rights and trans issues and trans people. And I was like, yeah, that's amazing for those that are safe enough to do it those that live in a world where it's safe to do it. But me, myself, like I have my uh, Black Trans Lives Matter shirt and I have worn it out in public before, um, but I've also worn it in spaces where I feel extremely safe. Yeah. Um, and not in spaces where who knows what could happen. Having a bumper sticker that basically says, I am trans, you're inviting everybody to follow you. And we talk about it. That's just going to be a recurring thing. We've talked about it. We talk about it. <laughs> uh, we we talked about that that fear and that yeah. that lack of safety and you know all of the things that could go wrong and to increase that for yourself is it's a burden that someone consciously takes on. And yeah. I think trying to force everybody into taking that on is not the way to do it. Right. <laughs> Well, and I don't think, I don't think anybody should have to be forced to, you know, be, I can understand how someone would want to, um, you know, fly under the radar, so to speak. Um, but it's interesting. I have been watching um, <laughs> episodes of the Fosters. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've, you've watched the show or not, but um the most recent episode that I was watching. So there's one of the characters is dating a trans guy. And what's interesting is, is that like having the awareness of, she always advocates for what is right. This particular character, Callie. And she starts dating this trans guy, Aaron, and they are, had run to this school because they had heard that ice was coming to pick kids up. So they get to the school and, and the way the scene is shot, someone that the 
that ICE is trying to get actually is running away to try to get into the school where they would be safe because the ICE can't go into the school. It's a grade mm -hmm. school or high school. And so this person pushes the trans person, Aaron, into one of the officers and the officer then arrests the trans person for um, obstructing justice. And so it's like, I had been thinking about this even last year when we were going into the pandemic, but there were people, you know, they're around the George Floyd murder and all of the protesting and those types of things. I honestly had to really think to myself, is it safe for me to go and be someone who's on the front line of some yeah. of these protests? Like, you know, 10 years ago, absolutely, freaking lutely I would be right there and wouldn't think twice about it. But I have to think about it now because if I get arrested, where are they going to put me? And how yep. safe am I? How's that going to shake out? And so like thinking about those types of things, you know, um, we do have to start looking at our lives and our, our experiences from that purview of, will I be safe? Because the truth of the matter is, is we're not in many places. You are less safe than me in many places. And understanding that is, um, is just imperative. It's, it's life-saving. So, mm -hmm. but you know what? It is 7.05. Hey. <laughs> We rushed through that hour in no time. <laughs> it went quick. I at some point during it, I was like, "Why we?" I swear we just, I swear she just came on. I swear we just started talking. I know. Don't go. Don't go. That's what I wanted to say. No, don't go. No, please. <laughs> Well, I'm going to shoot Just her an email. Just another 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to shoot her an email later and say, you are welcome back on the show anytime. If there's anything that you want to talk about or share with us, we would love to have you come back. So anyway. Yeah. All right. I would love to have more chats and we need to start working on this uh, New York trip. Yes. Oh, my God. I need that to happen. Yes. Agreed. I do, too. Frankly speaking. speaking. <laughs> 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 we definitely need to make that a plan all right well we didn't have a whole lot of interaction today which is kind of a bummer but it is what it is at least we had a lovely conversation with our i had an amazing conversation yeah. and that was what i needed absolutely so we're all good. Well, you know, I love you, Avalisa. So grateful to be on this journey in life with you and to count you as like one of my besties. So, <laughs> and you are beautiful. You. you are beautiful as fuck. <laughs> it's, it's something that has been really hard to like accept. Yeah. It's, it's been very weird to, you know, feel so insecure with yourself and who you are for so long. And then everybody's like, you're gorgeous. And it's like, what the fuck do you want? <laughs> so <laughs> to finally be in a place where it's like, oh, thank you. Yeah. But I forget all the time. I'll walk past me and be like, damn. <laughs> okay, I get it. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, you are beautiful. All right, beautiful. That is it for tonight. Uh, wonderful episode of Frankly Speaking with our dear friend, uh, Mila Jam. Be sure to go and check her out on YouTube. She's got a lot of very cool projects coming up as well. We didn't really even get to touch on half of that stuff. She is busy, busy, busy. Um, but we will see you in two weeks. We're going to go back to our regularly scheduled. If you are someone who is transgender, non-binary, or gender non-conforming, and you want to join us on the show, we would love to have you. Just email me, elirigatuso at gmail.com, and I will put that in the chat, in the comments. Um, you can email me there, and we will get you booked on the show. So Just I'll come and chit-chat with us. Talk that real shit. Yes. Exactly. It feels good. It's therapy. Trust me, you should do it. Yes, absolutely. Well, I know you have a lot to do. You have to get packed and get moving and uh, off to your big trip to Washington. Do you want to share a little bit Washington, about Washington, D.C.? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
I am one of the board members of TAVA, which is Transgender American Veterans Association. Uh, and we are out there advocating for trans vets, not only with the VA, but in all walks of transness and how tough that can be. And so we're trying to create a sense of community and create ways that make transitioning and existing a lot easier. And so uh, we are coming into a new era. We fought really hard through, um, um, I don't want to say his name, but we all know who I'm talking about. We <laughs> That was really hard on all of us, uh, specifically trans veterans, because uh, him uh, banning trans people from serving in the military had a very hard ripple effect on everyone that was connected with the military and trans. And so we got past that hurdle. And we also got the wonderful news that the ban on gender confirmation surgeries has been lifted uh, through the VA. And so gender confirmation surgery is a little bit down the line. It's not happening tomorrow, but a little bit down the line, uh, they are going to be covered through the VA. And so that was a really big thing that we had been fighting for for a very long time. And so now it's time to figure out where we're going. And so we're gonna be in Washington, DC, all of next week working together and talking and having these conversations about where we want to go and how to be better leaders and how to be a better organization. Well, I hope that when you're there, you know, rubbing elbows with the big wigs that you uh, pull your iPhone out and record them saying, tune in to Frankly Speaking. <laughs> I will make sure that that happens. Especially Monica Helms. I will make sure to get a very special request in. Ah, uh, yes, that would be amazing. If you could even just like have her say who she is and what she did. For those of you who are watching, she was the creator of the transgender flag. So Avalisa will hopefully be meeting her next week on her trip and just, you know, shoot some videos for us, shoot them over to me and I'll share them on the Speaking of Happy page and what you're up to. All right. Big time. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this chat. I always enjoy chats with you. Uh, yeah. We we're on the same level in so many different areas that it's it's it like Mila said, it's like taking your belt off. You don't have to worry about explaining everything just to get to the point. You just just talk and get more accomplished like that. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you in two weeks. Good night.